You are listening to the new Mutual Audio Network. Welcome home. The following audio drama is rated G for general audience. And now, Dakota Ring Theater presents the continuing adventures of Canada's greatest superhero, that scourge of the underworld, hunter of those who prey upon the innocent, that marvelous masked mystery man known only as the Red Panda! The Red Panda, mysterious crusader for justice, hides his true identity as one of the city's wealthiest men in his never-ending battle against crime and corruption. Only his trusty driver, Kit Baxter, who joins him in his quest in the guise of the Flying Squirrel, knows who wears the mask of the Red Panda. This episode, The Sunday Supplement. Oh, hello, kid. I thought I gave you the day off. You did. So why aren't you enjoying your Sunday? It's a beautiful, peaceful morning. That's why. Oh, come on. Don't give me that. You're the one that taught me to scale buildings. You gave me boomerangs and grapple guns and a cat suit with retractable gliding membranes. It's your fault if sitting quietly and waiting for lunch doesn't seem as exciting as it used to. Are you even listening to me? Yes. Yes, of course you can stay to lunch. Boss! Hmm? Good guess, but wrong. Kit, I'm sorry if you're bored. The Sunday paper is one of the few simple pleasures I allow myself. You mean aside from the mansion full of servants? (sighs) By the way, your new butler's giving me a hard time. Stanley? What about? Being here. Speaking before I'm spoken to, that kind of thing. It'll settle down. I can't start hypnotizing him already. Why not? He'd make a great chicken. Kit, you can only alter the same person's memories or thought patterns in the same way so many times before you risk doing damage. Senior members of my household are in a unique position to observe behavior that some might find suspicious. The last butler figured out who we were three times in a month. That's only because he had a wild imagination. Most of them think we have a rather different secret. Mm? Hmm? <laughs> What's that? And some people have no imagination at all. Kit Baxter, behave yourself. That one was just a lucky guess. Mm-hmm. Shouldn't we be out protecting something? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna do something fiendish to that newspaper. Do you want the funnies? But, n- no, I don't want the funnies. I want to do something. You'll never find adventure in the newspaper, boss. Kit, we were patrolling the rooftops most of the night. The morning reports from our agents around the city are almost singularly uninteresting. It's been at least a week since the city was threatened by a costume menace, and Chief O'Malley has actually withdrawn the reward for information leading to our arrests. And to celebrate, I am doing something. I am sitting in the garden reading the paper. You do know how to show a girl a good time, don't ya? You've got a garage full of high-powered wheels! Let's go for a spin. If you're very good, I might even let you drive. Let's go. Holy cats! Really? We could take the limo if you like, but I just tuned the coupe and I'd like to test it on the open road. Oh, oh, but I've been dying to get my paws on that new speedster! I had a different set of wheels in mind. What's that? Look in the paper. The paper? But what? Adventure. Page 16, third column in, eighth box down. And meet me in the lair. Third column in. Attention. Attention, Red Panda. Desperate circumstances. Help needed before all is lost. Respond soon as please. Margaret Horace, 233 Westbridge. Hey! Hey! Hey, boss! Boss! Wait up! Hello? Hello? It's Margaret Horace. Uh, Are you... Are you there, Red Panda? I I got your message to wait in the lane for the taxi cab. He brought me here to this warehouse and left me. Hello? 
I I'm not too late, am I? I never drove so fast in my life. Sister, that was nothing. <coughs> what are you screaming for? You're standing on the ceiling. Y yeah, but you're not, so I repeat. I'm sorry. This has been quite a day. I'm not surprised after that stunt you pulled. You should have known that placing that ad in the newspaper would bring out half the reporters in town, and most of the crazies. It never occurred to me. There were so many I I'll say. We had to come up with a plan to spring you. It took us half an hour to knock them all off your trail, even with Sully's driving. Sully? The cab driver? Owed us a favor. Y you're the flying squirrel, aren't you? What was the tip-off? Would you mind coming down here? This is very awkward. Give up the high ground? Not till the boss gets here. The red panda? Where is he? Just cleaning up a couple of stragglers. Boss! Who are your playmates? The last two that Sully couldn't shake. I'd introduce you, but they're busy being unconscious just now. They news hounds? Too determined. <clears throat> this one's Lefty Maxwell. I don't know the other. Gangsters? They were following me? Uh... Easy, miss. Miss? I take it this is Margaret Horace. That's what she said. Keep your eyes peeled for trouble. I can see her just fine. Squirrel. I've never fainted in my life, and I don't like girls that do. All right. Just truss up those two for me. Right, boss. Miss Horace? Miss Horace, are you all right? Uh, well, Red Panda, it's really you. Oh, brother. Miss Horace. Maggie, please. <sighs> Maggie, then. Why don't you tell us all about it? Well, you see, it's my father, Jacob Horace. Perhaps you've heard of him. He's an inventor? I'm afraid not. I suppose I'm not surprised. Father never did have a lot of success. But he was on the verge of something big. Was? Is he... I don't know. I don't know, and I'm horribly afraid. Oh, boy. Is everything all right over there? Oh, just peachy. Your father is missing, then, Miss Horace? Yes. Yes, and I'm just sick about it. The police are no help, and if you can't find him, I... One thing at a time. You say your father was on the verge of something. Yes. Yes, he was very excited. But he needed money to finish his prototype. The last time I talked to him, he said he would thought he found a backer. He was to meet with him the very next day. He said he'd call me. That was three weeks ago. I went round to his house. He'd taken all his plans and models with him. The man from the police said it sounded like he'd skipped town to avoid his creditors. Oh, I know it's not true. I just know it. There, there. Did your father give any clue about the identity of this backer he was meeting? No. No, I don't think he knew himself. He said Mr. Bryce was to make the introductions. Bryce? A lawyer father met. He helps a lot of inventors. A at least, that's what father said. The laboratory is at your father's house? Yes. Here. Here's the address, and the keys are in this envelope. Swell. That'll save three seconds. Do you think there's any hope? I couldn't say yet, Miss Horace. There may be a very simple explanation. But these gangsters... We're following you to get to us. Not unlike that bevy of reporters, though for different reasons. In any case, we'll have to move you to a safe house for a few days until this case is concluded. A safe house? As long as the criminal underworld believes you might lead them to us, you won't be safe at home. Squirrel? Listen to me. Walk out that door. At the end of the alley, you'll find a newsie. He'll be selling the Chronicle, but he'll ask you if you want the Evening Star. Give him a dollar and tell him to keep the change. He'll start to walk away. Follow him. Uh, but... Lady, the less you know, the safer you are. Now go! Uh, yes. Y yes, of course. Thank you both. Well, what do you think? I think this whole thing smells. I think we're not putting that key in any lock till I check it twice for bombs. <laughs> a trap. Six to five and pick him, Lefty Maxwell and his pal were her hired muscle. You think? No. I wish I did. Girls that helpless are why men keep opening perfectly good doors for me. You really think that's why? I think... Hey, wait a minute. What does that mean? Let's get to Jacob Horace's laboratory. If you like... I'll even let you open the door. Boss. Boss, you still here? Still here in the lab, Squirrel. What did you find out? 
There are two lawyers in town named Bryce. Neither one of them admits to knowing Jacob Horace or having anything to do with helping inventors find backers. Do you think they were lying? They're lawyers. I kind of took it for granted. <laughs> One's mostly real estate, but the other's in criminal law. A prosecutor? Guess again. Works for some pretty shady types, hmm. though he's never been tied to anything himself. Not yet, anyway. That could mean something. If you teach me hypnosis, we'd know for sure. Now, Squirrel, you do lots of things that I can't. Like drive? Like dr <laughs> There is nothing wrong with my driving. Your driving's fine. Your stopping's lousy. All right. There's too much of it, and it usually involves solid objects. I said all right. I heard you. How are you making out with the mad scientist notes? There's not much left to go on. Horace must have taken most of his material with him to impress his backer. But one thing is certain, he's not mad. You think he really was onto something? Something big. Look at this schematic. Are you gonna explain it to me? How's my driving again? It's brilliant. Mm. I'm wildly jealous. Now give. This looks like a rough design for an electrical field disruption generator. An electric how much? I played with this a few years ago and couldn't make it work. Essentially, this device prevents electrical fields from forming within a certain radius. And that's good? It is if you plan to use it to disarm maniacs with ray guns. It could just as easily be used to shut down our devices, like our static shoes or radio rings. And if they built one big enough? They could hold the entire city hostage. Or just rob it blind. Right. So whether he's a supervillain or an innocent stooge, Jacob Horace has an appointment with the Red Panda. Couldn't have said it better myself. You are listening to the Red Panda Adventures from Decoder Ring Theater. Your address for adventure, mystery, and comedy. Who's there? Oh. Evening, Lefty. I let myself in. Hope you don't mind. You! You broke my nose. It's not like you were pretty before. I'll kill you! Oh, oh what a lovely revolver. <laughs> and I didn't get anything for you. Drop it, Lefty, or you'll be needing a new nickname. <sighs> That's better. Have a seat. You and me are going to have a little chat. I got nothing to say to you, squirrel. Lefty, lefty, lefty. Remember that time I couldn't get you to talk, so I knocked you out and hung you by your ankles from a gargoyle 16 stories over downtown? I remember you left me there. Yeah. How long did it take the fire department to get you down again? Ten hours. Ten hours. So many memories. <sighs> All right. There's a good boy. See, the boss of me figured you boys were tailing the Horace girl to get to us. Then we figured out what her old man was up to and thought maybe it was more than that. I don't know nothing about that. Nothing about what? That crazy old inventor. <laughs> you really are dumb as a bag of hammers, aren't you, Lefty? What? I don't rate a visit from the big guy? He just hypnotized you, Lefty. I'm gonna beat it out of you. You might hurt me, Squirrel, but you're not gonna kill me. She will. She will, will she? Why don't you just give me a name and address? You're already halfway there. You think this is funny, don't you? Don't you? You won't be laughing when she gets finished with your boss. What are you on about now? Think you're so smart, don't you? But you're dumb enough to let Bryce walk away. Your lawyer pal won't walk far. He'll be spilling his guts to the boss right now. Wrong, rodent. She figured you'd call the big guns when the mouthpiece stonewalled you. The Red Panda's walking right into a trap. That's for smiling while you said that. Flying Squirrel the Red Panda. Come in, Red Panda. Flying Squirrel the Red Panda. Come in, boss. Boss, come in. It's a trap. What's the matter, Squirrel? Nobody home? You don't mind if I handcuff you to this radiator, do you, Lefty? <laughs> And I'll just leave this over here, just a few feet out of reach. Go. What's that? A bomb, silly. A, a, a bomb? Just a little one. Just big enough to spray you all over this room if I'm not back in three hours. Oh, 
And Lefty? Yeah? If this she hurts the boss, I won't be coming back. Well, good morning. What? Uh, Morning? Possibly. Hard to tell in here. Are you all right, young man? Jacob Horace, I presume. How did you know? I'm supposed to be rescuing you. I let myself get sapped like an amateur. Don't feel too bad. I walked right in the front door and handed them my life's work. The electrical field disruption generator? How did you I tried something myself once, but it never worked. Or rather, it worked too well for its own good. You can't happen to see how many locks they've got on these chains, can you? Oh, I make it three. Just three? I hate being underestimated. Well, you were unconscious. (laughs) There is that. What is this place? It looks like a crude laboratory. Yes, this is where they forced me to complete my prototype. Then it's finished. You actually overcame the paradox? How do you build a device to prevent the formation of electrical fields that doesn't eliminate its own power supply? Yes, yes, that was the final masterstroke. A tiny compensator circuit surrounding the unit's dynamic flow regulator. I'm impressed. But why did they bring me here? That mask of yours seems to generate a painful electric shock to anyone who tries to remove it. (laughs) They couldn't understand why the device is unaffected by my disruption generator. For that matter, neither can I. No electrical equipment should be operative within a hundred feet of this machine. It's quite intriguing. I'd be pleased to explain it, sir. If you could just do one thing for me... What's that? The ring on my right hand. Do you think you could wire it to one of your compensator circuits? And quickly? This ring? What does it do? It might help us if I can't pick these locks. I'd have to remove it, of course. Naturally. Hurry, please. Certainly, young man. Certainly. Now, if you just care to explain how your mask defeats my device... Yes, of course. Just a moment. Almost... Ah! One. One? Oh, yes, uh, good show. Uh, now, the mask? How's that circuit coming? Just about... there. The device inside your ring should be working normally now. Would you be so kind as to press the central switch down and twist it to the left? Hmm. Oh, yes, uh, there we are. Two. Good show. I, I know you have your secrets, young man, but... I have spent a lifetime perfecting this device, and I really must know why it affects everything which uses electricity, except the security device in your mask. I think we might be in trouble. Why is that? This last lock is very, very good. I'm impressed. Perhaps your ring will help you? I'll give it back to you, if only you'll tell me Shh! I'm sorry, Mr. Horace. I must seem very rude to be so distracted by a little life-and-death situation like this. But you see, I did promise your daughter I'd bring you back safe. My daughter? Maggie, yes. Oh, of course. She must be so worried, poor child. But I'm terribly afraid of what these fiends might do with my creation. If I understand how to protect against the field disruption effect, if we could let the world know... Protecting others has to be our first priority. Yes. Yes, I see your point. Very well. It must have something to do with the shielding that prevents me from being electrocuted when the mask's charge is tripped. Yes. Yes, I see. A shield... Yes. You see, a mask can be terribly useful, particularly when your real face has become... inconvenient. Isn't that right, Maggie? Maggie? There's no point hiding in the shadows, Miss Horace. As if that were your real name. How did you know I was here? I heard you come in a moment ago. It had to be you, Golden Claw. So you know. I knew the moment I laid eyes on Bryce. Your defense lawyer. And one of the few who remained loyal to you after your fall. Golden Claw? That's right, Horace. Your new master is one of the most sinister criminal minds in history. 
She consolidated organized crime in the city under her rule until she was finally stopped. Yes, stopped by you, mystery man. I heard you'd engineered an escape from prison. I see you bought a new face as well. And twenty years of new life to go with it, Red Panda. There is much that science does not understand, and most of it is available for a price. This is no crude plastic surgery, but an entirely new body. Even you couldn't tell I wasn't sweet, young Margaret Horace. If only there really was such a person. Men are such idiots. If that isn't your body, it must have belonged to someone before. Who was she? What did you do to her? What does it matter? Golden Claw, you diabolical fiend. Golden Claw? Who is that? <laughs> it's no good, Red Panda. I'm twenty years younger. My fingerprints are different. Even if you lived through this, no court would ever believe such a wild story. I can never answer for the crimes of Golden Claw now. But freedom and new life took what small fortune the law had left me. I needed money to rebuild my empire. And you found just the stooge to provide you with the means to do so. Jacob Horace. Career failure. What did she offer you to betray decent society, Horace? You could never understand. All I'd ever wanted was respect. If I couldn't have that, terror would do nicely. I showed Mr. Horace that his device could be so much more than a scientific curiosity. We could hold entire cities for ransom. But we couldn't allow you to interfere. Then Lefty Maxwell and his little friend were your hired muscle after all. Hard times, Red Panda. One must make do. But when you foiled our ambush, I had to think quickly, draw you into my snare. You offered us just enough information to keep us interested until you could set another trap. A nice improvisation, Golden Claw. But you don't have the manpower left to pull it off. A cheap hood like Maxwell and a rank amateur. They couldn't have enjoyed being slapped around too much. Is that why they aren't here? Be quiet! I don't need them. With this device, we can deactivate the alarms in any bank. Steal enough to buy back the loyalty of my troops. And you won't be here to stop us. Goodbye, Red Panda. No, don't shoot him yet. I must know how his mask defeats my device. Be quiet, Horace. You overstep your bounds. What does it matter after he's... Horace. What is that ring doing on your work table? I was trying to coax his secret out of him. It's some sort of electric lockpick. You fool! It's operational! I wasn't going to give it to him! It's not a lockpick, idiot! It's his radio ring! If there's a tracking device... Oh! <coughs> Don't you love it when they figure it out too late? The flying squirrel! Not again! I've got her! Watch those hands, bub! Oh. Ah. Don't move, flying squirrel! You might be fast, but I doubt you could dodge a bullet at this range. Princess, I knew I didn't like you. Well, bully for your instincts. Too bad they won't save you. Any last words? Why, yes, actually. Three. What are they? Get her, boss! What the... Uh, red panda! No! But how? The third lock was good, but it wasn't that good. Curse you! Curse you both! Good work, Squirrel. Thanks. Enjoying that judo hold, are we? Well, if you'd bring some of that chain over, I could... I've got a better idea. <laughs> Nasty. Then what's that grin doing all over your face? Grin? Me? Never once. I uh, didn't get a program on the way in. Exactly when did Little Miss Sugarpop turn supervillain? I'll explain in the morning. That uh, reminds me... I might be in a little late. Oh, yes? I left my alarm clock at Lefty Maxwell's place. Your alarm clock? I told him it was a bomb. He's probably shrieking his head off right about <laughs> now. <laughs> See, now that is nasty. I think you enjoy it. I'm just making mental notes to stay on your good side. You do that. I need a day off after this day off. In fact, I think we could both use a break. Oh, no. I thought perhaps a nice, long Sunday drive? It's almost Monday. Who's counting? Which car? Sidekick's choice. But, uh, what about your newspaper? Actually, I've been thinking about canceling my subscription.
And so concludes another adventure of the Red Panda! This recording and the story, characters, and situations contained therein are the exclusive property of their creator and copyright holder, Greg Taylor, and are produced and distributed by Decoder Ring Theater through arrangement with him. These recordings may not be rebroadcast or redistributed by any means for any reason without express permission. Until next time, when Decoder Ring Theater brings you the further thrilling adventures of Canada's greatest superhero, this is Stephen Burley reminding you DecoderRingTheater.com is your address to adventure! The Red Panda Adventures, Episode 14, The Sunday Supplement, was written and directed by Greg Taylor and featured the vocal talents of Monica Cote, Gregory Z. Cook, Scott Moyle, Clarissa Dunetta Landon, and Greg Taylor. Until next time for all of us here, good night. Hey everyone, it's Mark from Leap Audio. I'm here to tell you about something really exciting. July 24 through 26 of 2020, Halifax, Nova Scotia, we are gathering together in the world's first international modern audio drama convention and family reunion. Inspired in part by the living, loving memory of our dear friend Bill Hallwake, we're bringing together writers, producers, actors, and our fans for workshops, seminars, and even live performances. So join us, won't you? Go to madcon.com. That's www.mad-con.com for more information. I hope to see you in Halifax in 2020.